Can I have your color lipstick? You do? With that blush? Yes. Huh? Yes. Thank you. My lipstick or your lipstick? Your lipstick. Oh, thank you. Want it? you want it? We'll talk about it after the podcast. Hi! Hi, welcome or welcome back. My name is Felicia. I'm a knitter living in Washington, D.C. And this is my little corner of the internet where I like to share all of my fun fiber goodness. And today I am joined by a special guest and a friend of the podcast, my mom. Mom, say hi. Hi. To them, I know hi. you. Are you going to tell them your name? My name is Patricia. This is Patricia, my mom. So whenever I'm saying hi, mom, in the podcast, this is who I'm talking to. Yeah, this is my special girl. So she came to visit me in D.C. Oh, shoot. I just realized that I don't have my... Oh, you can see my art <coughs> background. Um, that she came to visit me in D.C. for my birthday slash our anniversary. <laughs> and I know that like over the summer... I had promised that I would do an episode of the podcast with my mom, and then I did it. So here we are today. We're doing the podcast together. I'm very excited, um, and we have a lot to go over. So I have some finished objects. I have some works in progress. I have some future cast-ons slash acquisition type things. Um, and then I think we're even going to ask or do like a little Q&A at the end. I asked the internet for questions <laughs> for you a while ago. Okay. And so I'm going to go back and answer those questions with you. Sound like a plan? Sound like a plan. Sounds like a plan. All right. So first of all, what are you wearing? Do you know what you're wearing? I don't know. <laughs> but what I do know is you made this. I did make that. Now the details... I have no idea, but it feels so good, and it looks so great. It does. It does look good. I have not even worn this out yet before. Oh You're the first goodness. person to wear it. Oh. oh. So this is the Ranunculus by um, Midori Hirose, and I knit it with some Pearl Soho. Um, the top is like Pearl Soho, and the bottom is... I can't remember, but I will link to my Ravelry page below so you can see all the details. I did modifications to make it two-toned, um, and I finished this a while ago, so I will also link to the podcast episode where I talked about this specific sweater and all of the modifications and everything, but I finished this earlier this year, um, and yeah, so you're the first person to wear it. Oh, you want me to make you one? Yes. <laughs> okay i'll make you one i'll make you one um i am wearing a black pearl magic sweatshirt shout out to my homegirl shayla um one of my lovely subscribers sent me this sweatshirt um after marilyn sheep and wool when i talked about wanting to get one and them not having any more in my size um and i just took it out of the like dryer and realized that it has some weird stain on it so shayla i'm gonna text you because I want another one of these sweatshirts and I'm gonna send you my card information so you can send me another one because I love this sweatshirt and every time I wear it people are always like is that a knitting pun like what is that that's so dope like everyone loves this sweatshirt even non knitters so I need another one like to have in the rotation because the stain is really killing my vibe so anyway how have you been enjoying DC since you've been up here I love DC especially with you you love DC with me yes okay what do you love about DC with me? I love all the fabulous places you take <laughs> me to eat. I do like to eat, y'all. I do like to eat. And we had some good seafood. We didn't have like the best seafood that we've ever had, but we went to this like seafood restaurant Ooh. up the street from my house and it was like a crab boil in a bag vibe. And they had drinks and we did that. But there's this other crab place that's like technically in Maryland that's maybe 20 minutes from my house that has even better crab and I kind of wish we had gone there but it was good to like try something new so yeah yes yeah I'll be back oh you will yes to do crabs to do crab okay you can come back anytime you want um okay so do you want to see all this stuff that I finished knitting I even have something for you oh me what <laughs> yes <laughs> all right first up finished objects um do you want to see what i made for you first no you can do the other stuff i want mine for last you want yours last. okay yes, we'll do yours last. the finale 
So we'll do them in order that I finish them. So the first thing that I finished a while ago, I think in June, is the Outline Raglan by Jessie Mae Designs. And I'm gonna get a little closer. So I knit this in, um, oh, what is it? It's Equinox Sport from um, Magpie Fibers in the color Bougie Beaver. I also have not worn this, so I need to wear this before the season is out. I've been waiting to share it on the podcast to wear it, which is like dumb, but that's what I've been doing. Um, anyway, I did a couple of modifications. I actually knit this at the same time as my friend Darcy. She did this like beautiful like yellow one. It's so pretty. Um, and I stole one of her modifications. So I did an eye cord around the neckline the sleeves and the bottom hem just because I feel like it makes it look a little bit more polished and finished and then I knit the sleeves longer so that I could fold it up I love a folded up cuff situation on a sweater um and I think I knit it a little bit longer than what it suggested I actually wanted to knit it a, a few inches longer but the, the longer you knit it the more that the whatever this the drop stitch detail excuse me, goes in and I didn't want it to like come to a complete point. So I wanted it to be as even as possible between the top and the bottom. So yeah, it's kind of cropped, but I like that. I don't like my sweater super long. I think that looks not flattering. So um, yeah, this is, this is that. You want one, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, spoiler alert, everything that I make, she wants me to make her one. True. So True. yeah, maybe I'll make you one. Um, but yeah, I really like that yarn and I want to knit with it again. I think I want to make, um, maybe a ranunculus with it or like something, I don't know, something like very everyday. I know when I first started knitting that, I was saying that I wanted to make something in like a cream colored with that, a cream color with that same yarn. And I still think I want to do that. That yarn is, it's amazing. It's so soft. It's so drapey. It's really nice to work with. I know a lot of like plant fibers can be hard on your hands. But that one is not like it's really, really pleasurable to knit with. So, yeah, I'm going to make something else with that. Um, my next finished object is this huge shawl that now the name escapes me. I'm going to look on my Ravelry page. Give me one second because my memory is faltering. You know, I'm getting old. <laughs> I am seasoned oh is that what I'm supposed to say I'm getting seasoned oh well my my memory is getting seasoned my memory is getting old the rest of me is getting seasoned is that what we'll say okay this is the plumpy shawl by Andrea Mowry and I knit it using a whole bunch of colors from the magpie fibers fiber society box um I think I had said like a while ago that I had been getting the Magpie Fiber Society box and I never really used the yarns and it was kind of stressful because you get all of these yarns and they're really pretty but for me it's not enough to make a sweater but also like some one skein DK projects are to me like I don't really always like them so one day I got the impetus to like cast on a plumpy shawl and I just pulled out a whole bunch of my um, Magpie Fibers Swanky DK and like matched up the colors and this is what I ended up with. Let's start from the top. I think this was where you cast on. Yeah. So this is where I cast on and then are you going to help me Vanna White? Yes. Okay. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then it ends over here. Um, and oh, oh, here we go. Here goes my model. You want one, don't you? Ooh, it feels so good. <laughs> it's got cashmere in it. No. Yeah. It's um, merino. You know what a merino is? No, ma'am. A merino is a type of sheep, but it's like a very soft sheep. Okay. So it's merino, and then it's got cashmere in it. Doesn't that look lovely on me? Ask the people. What do you think? People. She people. wants it. You want that one? I just love it. I'll let you borrow it. You'll let me borrow it? Yes. Thank you. Um, anyway, so it is knit with garter stitch and brioche. Do you know which one is garter and which one is brioche? Oh, I'm just a fan. I know nothing about knitting and yarn. <laughs> 
Um, so it's knit with garter and brioche, and then it has like a spine that you work like your increases up the side, and it's like asymmetrical. And it's, I don't know. Every once in a while, I just get like the urge to cast on like a brioche shawl, and I think that oops, we lost the pillow. I think that um, Andrea Mowry does really good like garter and brioche shawls, and I was able to use up um, a little over basically like all five skeins. I think it calls for five colors. You can do a three color version that I think is sport weight or you can do a five color DK version. Um, and so yeah, this has been blocked and sitting waiting for me to share with the podcast. You like it? It is lovely. <laughs> Thanks for allowing me to try it. Do you want me to make you one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, we can look in my yarn stash and find you some colors. Yes. And I'll make you one. Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. I need that. You need that? <laughs> okay, so my nephew, um, he's six now. It breaks my heart. Um, but when he was younger, he would like walk up to stuff and he'd be like, need that. Need that. And that was his way of telling you that he wanted whatever you had. So now it's a family joke that we'll just go to stuff and be like, need that. Need that. Um, but anyway, so I really love this shawl. I think I would definitely make another one. It's huge and it's really heavy. Um, and I really just wanted to like use up the colors. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You can have this one. I'll make a different one. No. You made that for you. So make I mean, I me. made it to make it. I didn't necessarily make it for me, but I did make something for you. You want to see what I made for you? You haven't seen it yet, have you? No, I have. Okay, so for Maryland Sheep and Wool, if you go way, way, way back to my last episode, which is not that far back because it's literally the last episode, I was talking about how I wanted to make um, the Cuddle Puddle Wrap by my friend Darcy, and um, of Darcy Does It, and I was so excited to get the yarns that were called for in the pattern. They're from Passion Knits, Passion Knits Yarn, and Ein is like a color genius um and her brights are so bright her colors are so pretty and so i really wanted to get this one particular color um to do the cuddle puddle wrap y'all have never seen this as a work in progress or anything you're literally just gonna see it as a finished object because i cast it on and it was like all that i worked on for a while um we're gonna get to like i lost my knitting mojo like i do every summer we'll come to that when we get to like other stuff but the moral of the story is I cast on and finished this shawl that I always intended to be for my mom this is the cuddle puddle wrap it's so bright that like the camera is freaking out um this is the cuddle puddle wrap and the pattern I'm gonna get close so you can see there we go Um, the pattern is again by Darcy. It's such an easy pattern. It's very, very intuitive. Um, and then the yarn is 100% superwash DK. Do you know what any of those words mean? No, ma'am. Okay, so superwash means that technically you can wash it. Although, you're not going to wash this. You're going to hand wash this. I will hand wash it for you and lay it flat to dry. Um, and then, like, DK is, like, the thickness of the yarn. So, you know, like, with fabric, you have, like... Um, I was about to say things that I don't know, but you know how you have like different thicknesses of cotton, like you have like quilting cotton and then you have like, you know, cotton that you would make like a shirt out of and then you have cotton that you would use for a bag, like all of those are different thicknesses of cotton. That's the same thing with yarn. So you have like different thicknesses of yarn and so then it helps you figure out like what needle size to use and how big it's going to be and all that. Anyway, so this is a DK weight pattern uh, or I use DK weight yarn. But I'm fairly certain that the pattern is written for fingering weight. But it's a shawl. Um, and it's knit from the point of the triangle up. So you really could use any thickness of yarn and just knit until you run out of yarn. Um, and then the color is, this is from the Coloring Book Collection. And the color is just called orange. So I'm going to have the pattern linked below. I'm going to have the yarn, everything linked below. Um, but this is for you. You want to put it on? You want me to put it on for yes. you? Yes. She's so spoiled, y'all. Um, okay, how do you... I don't know how you like to wear your shawls. However you put it. It's However the way I'm going to wear it today. You're going to wear... You're going to burn up. No, I mean for this... Oh, for the rest of the episode? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how to put a shawl on someone else. Okay, you can kind of scrunch it up. There we go. Like that. I don't know. I feel like... 
yeah and then bring it like this oh i love it you love it i knew this color would look so pretty on you that's a lot of orange on orange but oh yeah you like that mm -hmm. that's gonna be really pretty in the winter time yes especially for football game for famu football games for famu she's not gonna go to a famu game y'all yes, or wear orange and green i'm gonna go to alabama when they play in alabama yeah are you really yes and you're gonna wear orange yes and green uh-huh and carry a black and gold purse we're not even playing Alabama State. We're not even playing Alabama State. I'm going to wear orange and green. She's not going to wear orange and green, y'all. Um, okay, so that's everything that I finished since the last episode. Oh, no. I'm lying. I finished two other things. Okay, so for a long time, I had been working. Um, anytime I would go to the office, I was working on this long knitted tube um, of yarn that I plan on turning into socks at some point. Um, I just wanted something simple to knit on. So I finished this. I will put this somewhere and if the occasion comes and I need to make some socks, I will already have a tube and I'll just do an afterthought toe. I mean, I'll add the toe, do an afterthought heel and cuff and I'll be able to turn it into a sock. But I just didn't have the mental capacity to do that for these. Um, and I've already knit a pair of socks out of this same yarn. This yarn is from Hugh Loco. Don't remember the color. I will, it was um, like a special limited edition color. So I won't link to the color, but I will link to Hugh Loco so that you can check out their yarns. Um, and then Ooh. after I finished that, I decided that I wanted to knit another pair of socks. I think I'm in like my sock knitting era um mainly because socks are like easy to knit they're very portable and in the summertime I feel like I just tend to lose motivation to knit like big sweaters and shawls and all of this other stuff but I still want to be knitting so socks are just like really really easy to knit and so I went in my stash and I found um and I am so ill prepared. I have no notes. I have nothing. But I was going to show you the ball of yarn. But I went and found um, another Hue Loco sock set. I have a bunch of sock sets from them because I've just been like buying them over the years. And so I went in and I saw this one and it just screamed pool. It screamed summer. It screamed knit me. And so I did. And so I knit a pair of just plain vanilla socks. Do you know what a vanilla sock is? Ooh. So... A vanilla sock is just like a plain knit sock. It doesn't have any patterning in it. It doesn't have like, it's just vanilla, like vanilla ice cream, like plain. Not necessarily boring, but kind of boring. Um, I knit these on a 2.5 millimeter needle. Um, I did 60 rounds. I did 20 rounds for the cuff, 60 rounds for the leg. I did a eye of partridge heel for the heel. Um, I did a heel flapping gusset and then I did eye of partridge because I like that more than the traditional like slip stitch one that looks like ribbing. I don't, I don't like that. So I did eye of partridge and then knit down and did a, I guess it's like a wedge toe. And then they're too big. Because they're super wash. So fun fact, super wash gross. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna spare y'all showing y'all my feet, but I'm gonna show her, like look how big they are. Mm -hmm. So they're house socks. I'm not gonna show y'all my feet because you have to pay for that type of content. But <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're too big. So I'm gonna show you in my works in progress because I only have one work in progress, which is another pair of socks that I am trying to, again, revamp my sock knitting situation. But these will make for great house socks and I have a feeling that when someone comes to visit me, they will want to steal my socks because they say that I keep my house really cold. Yes. I keep my house at a normal temperature. I do. So do we wanna ask the internet? Okay, she likes to keep her house at like 75 degrees. In the summer, I'm like a 70. 68. I like to be at 68 when I'm sleeping. I do like to be at 68 when I'm sleeping, but like 
I can do 70 to 72 and be okay. But as soon as I, without fail, anytime it's like 74 degrees, don't I always walk in and I'm like, it's 74 degrees in here. It's like something in my body knows when it is exactly 74 degrees in the house and I, I can't take it. So comment below, are you team 74 to 76? Are you, you know, team a normal person? Team 68. 68 to 72, it's summer. It's so hot outside, I don't understand. I don't understand. Keep living. <laughs> I just, I don't know, anyway. So I have a feeling that these socks will be put to good use anytime someone comes to visit um, me. So now, do you wanna see what I've been knitting on? Okay. So like I said, I finished working on those socks and I don't remember the color, the color name again, it's not gonna matter. In large part because it was limited edition yarn that I bought in 2020, so. You can't buy that yarn, but they Hue Loco does make really cute sock sets. Do you know what a sock set is? No, darling. No, I am. Okay, so a sock set is like yarn that's put together with the intention to be knit into socks. Okay. So it'll normally have like one really big skein of yarn that you use for this part, and then it will have a smaller like 20 grams of yarn that you can use for like the cuffs, the heels, the toes, if you wanna do like contrasty socks. Okay. So uh, I went through a phase where I was very into sock sets, even though I was not an established Ooh. sock knitter. And so I have a ton of sock sets. So after I finished those, I was like, oh, I love knitting socks. I'm all in. And so I wanted to knit another pair of socks. So I went into my stash. Do you know what a stash is? I think, oh, I'm sorry, do you know what a stash is? I think a stash is a collection of things that you go to when you want something. So I really look at you, to you. gold star. <laughs> um, although I have been thinking about this, this is like a tangent, but there are some people who think or who have had conversations around like using the word stash and the negative connotations around the word stash. I don't have any opinion about it because it you know, whatever, but I do like the new phrasing that I've seen people use, which is yarn pantry. I like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's very cute. So maybe I'll start referring to it as my yarn pantry. It's just like somewhere you can go and like shop and find your own things. And we know I have lots of yarn. Yes. What y'all can't see <clears throat> is that there's like yarn everywhere. Um, so I have plenty of yarn. Anyway, went into my yarn pantry, whatever we want to call it. And I found another sock set that I purchased. Again, it's limited edition, um, so it doesn't even matter because you can't get it. But I bought it, and it's living in my, again, this is from Shayla of Black Pearl Magic. I got this in the Kwanzaa ad advent in 2021 um, that Ein of Passion Knits did, and it had this beautiful bag from Shayla in it and I love it. It's perfect for socks. Um, and then it has like a drawstring. Isn't that so cute? And it's like mud cloth. And like the bottom is real nice. That's what Shayla do. So my mom is a really amazing sewist, like beyond amazing. But like, look at Shayla's like work. Have I shown you her like vinyl bags? I'll show you later. She does vinyl bags and I'm obsessed with them anyway. Um, so I went and I pulled out this yarn to do another pair of socks and like I said yarn doesn't really matter because it was limited edition and you can't get it so um I don't know show it was giving me fall vibes which is what I was needing I needed some fall in my life after doing this like arguably very summer sock I needed the fall so um I did 20 rounds again on the cuff and then I did this vertical, hold on, there we go, oh, there we go. I did a, verti a vertical braid, there we go, right here across in this contrast color. So you see it, it like breaks it up. And then I did, again, 60 rounds on the leg, 
heel flap and gusset, eye of partridge, I'm very boring. Now what I, what I decided to do was to go down a needle size. So I'm knitting on these very teeny tiny baby size needles that I believe are a 2.25 millimeter because I'm trying to get my perfect like fit of sock. And I think already they're gonna be a much better fit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Hopefully they don't grow because I don't want to go down to a 2.0. That just feels like torture. But um, I found out or I've been told by lots of people that I have small feet. I do not. I have adult sized feet. I don't understand this whole thing. <laughs> but um, what I've been doing on these is, and again, this is like not some super secret hack, but to make sure that my socks are even, I use light bulb stitch markers for every 20 rounds and then I marked where I started the heel flap and then did 20 rounds from that and so I'm gonna do I think 60 rounds on the foot and then do I want to do a rounded toe I think on these instead of a wedge toe you know the difference mm -hmm. you know the difference I think so what's the difference between a wedge toe and a rounded toe a wedge toe is gonna be more square like mm -hmm. and a rounded toe is gonna be more like. Look at you! Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do for these. I also think that I want to put another vertical braid before I start the toe, and then because I want to like bring this color, like this, I want it to feel even from the top to the bottom. But I don't want to do a different color toe, even though nobody's gonna see the. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the details. You know I love a hidden detail. So. Um, I'm going to keep working on these. My goal is to have these. I started working on these actually a while ago. These I knit in a week. I knit both of these socks in a week. Um, and then this I've been working on for like three weeks. So I'll probably like go ahead and wrap it up because I'm ready for my winter knits. Like I'm ready to knit for fall. Um, I am like full in on fall. The day after my birthday is fall to me. I, <laughs> I am like I'm ready for fall. I'm so sick of summer y'all. DC summer, like summer in general this year, like really showed out. DC summer was terrible. It was so hot. It was like, then there was all of these monsoon. Well, I don't know. Monsoon is a technical term, but there was a lot of rain and it was just so hot and gross and ugh. There was like heat advisories every day. And she's in Alabama, and it's like... They're having a heat advisory now. We you have one today? We canceled the baseball game for Sunday because it's going to be 101 degrees. Like the actual temperature is going to be 101 degrees? So they canceled oh. the baseball The Biscuits baseball game? game? Yes. Biscuits are our local, like, minor league baseball team. That's sad. I mean, I'm glad that they went ahead and canceled because that is, like ridiculously hot but it's sad that like the heat is so bad that people are having to cancel their plans and like not get to do stuff but I Felicia personally it is fall mentally it is fall I don't want to wear any more shorts I don't want to wear any more sandals I want to wear Ugg boots and sweatshirts like I am fully tapped into fall I'm fully tapped in I it's no secret it has been discussed at nauseum here on the podcast I hate the summer and so I am ready for fall which means fall knits which means I have things that I want to be casting on and should be casting on will be casting on soon so I'm gonna show y'all what I have planned to cast on and a new yarn a new to me yarn I don't know if it's new it's new to me and like what I plan to use it for it's the yarn the beat you'll see you'll see Okay, so we just took a mini internal commercial break and my mom was looking at my bag of yarn. Most of it is from Maryland Sheep and Wool, actually. I just haven't put it away because I've been meaning to actually film a video about how I organize my yarn and how I catalog everything and like the different apps that I use. Anyway, do y'all remember this pretty yarn from Cake Wool? So she was like, oh, I really like that yarn. I think it's so pretty. This is... The color Waking Dream on their um, mohair silk base. And I was telling her that I want to hold it double with this color. And like marl it. I think it would be so pretty to make like a mohair sweater. 
with these two colors like held together. You have doubts? No, I like it, but you know I don't like either of those colors for real, for real. But you know that's the inside thing. But, but you beautiful. like this color? I like fuchsia. You love fuchsia. Yes. So, I don't know. What do y'all think? I think if I hold these together, there's a sweater pattern by, um, oh, who is it? There's like a free pattern that's like a mohair, you hold mohair double. Um, and I think this would be so pretty, the two of these held together. So maybe this is my first fall plan. Yes, we know that magenta looks pretty on you. Do you like mohair? Are you sensitive to mohair? I don't know. Have, have I ever made see. you anything with mohair? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll knit this sweater and then you can try it on and see. Then I can just put a line and I knit it. Yeah, a lot of people um, that have sensitivities to like wool or mohair, they will put just like a t-shirt or like a camisole under it um, to keep it from being as itchy. Some people find this the most itchy around their neck or like right here on their chest, but then like other places it's not as bad. Also, I think people who run hot tend to be more bothered by like... Well, it won't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was not one of my plans. But I was like, we were talking about it. And I was like, we should talk about it for the people. I don't know. I think I might do that. I might experiment with that. But there are some projects that I for sure am going to cast on. So I... Hold on. So I had purchased a while ago the Cory Worsted Confetti, which looks like this. This is the color Ochre. And I love that like baby puke green. I don't know if you remember, but like years ago, years ago when I was in like grad school, I had a nail polish this color that I was obsessed with from OPI. And I used to wear it all the time. I love this scummy green I call it baby puke I don't know but like I love that color and so I had bought that I had also purchased because I was obsessed with Cory confetti when it first came out this color of Cory confetti as well don't remember this one is called Frambo I don't speak French anymore well, I never really spoke French, kind of. Anyway, um, I really love this color. And I had been wanting to cast something on, looking at different sweater patterns. And the Cory Confetti is kind of difficult to figure out a pattern for because I think it looks better textured. So like cables or things like that, as opposed to stockinette, which is like this kind of, like just plain like knit fabric. Okay. And, but I didn't want to do something that other people had already done. And, but I wanted something that was also going to be kind of mindless, kind of easy, really cute. So I saw this pattern and it's called the Vleck pattern by, it's called the Vleck sweater. And it's by, give me a second. So it's called the Vleck Basket Weave Pullover, and I will have all of this linked below. And it is by, why can't I see? Oh, Nancy Marchant. So she's like this big designer. She normally does like brioche and things like that, but she has the Vleck pattern and it's a bat all over basket weave pattern. And then you do these like splotches mm -hmm. of color across like the front and back if you want to like however you want so it's knit flat bottom up and it has intarsia so it felt like a lot mentally to commit to here let me show you the picture so this is the pattern i don't know if that's there we go that's the pattern and I have the color that the pattern was originally written for, but I don't know. For some reason, I still, I don't know that I want to use that for that. So I swatched both of these colors for this pattern. 
This is the Fram Frambo color. And this is the ochre color. And I did not cast on because I couldn't decide. I think they look they I think they both look really pretty in the pattern. <clears throat> on this one, the darker purple one, I messed up. So the swatch doesn't show like the full pattern because I sort of messed up the swatch, but you can kind of get the idea. And then on the ochre one, I did get the like the actual patterning right so you can see it a little better. But I don't I don't know which one I like better. My choice. This is your choice? Okay, what do y'all think? Maybe I'll do a poll on Instagram and see which color people like better. See, I just feel like this, you know, this is like the color of lipstick I love. It's like the color of blush I love. I just feel like it's so good. Like this, with like some camo. I don't know. And I'm also debating if I'm going to, I saw a version on Ravelry where the person didn't do any of the intarsia. So I'm also debating about if I'm going to actually add the intarsia because I kind of feel like I just like the patterning of it way more than I like the idea of doing like the splotches on it. So we'll see. But this is going to be one of my next cast ons and either one of these colors. I think I'm going to put up a poll on the community tab and on Instagram and y'all can let me know in the comments which color you like best. I'm torn. I love this color. It just, maybe because I have on like this color lipstick. Mm -hmm. So it's like sticking out mm -hmm. to me more. And I'm just like, in the winter time, I'm so vampy. And I love like super dark lipsticks and plums and berries. Um, but I also just really love this ochre color. And I have an, a, enough of each of these colors that I can do something different with either one of them. But... I had the yarn all, you know, caked up, ready to go, and then indecision hit me, and so I didn't cast either one of them on because I couldn't decide on a color. So that's project number one. Project number two that is definitely happening. Do you like this bag? Mm -hmm. I bought some yarn from someone on Ravelry, and they sent me the yarn in this bag. Wasn't that so sweet? They made yeah. it themselves. Um, and we know how I feel about denim. So it's like so pretty. Anyway, so I have seen Darcy knit about a billion sorrel sweaters. This is what it looks like. I'm sure y'all know what it looks like, but I'm going to show her what it looks like. So I've seen her knit so many of them, and I've wanted to make one for a really long time, but I didn't want to... I didn't want to buy like a whole bunch of yarn and because you need like a whole bunch of colors. Like, look how pretty that is. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I love it. Isn't that so pretty? And I really loved like the original one. It's, it's like this, um, the sample one is like a really pretty dark green fade. So I had been wanting to knit one. And so I went into my yarn pantry months ago, months ago. I believe I sent these a picture of these colors um, to Darcy. And I was like, I want to knit a sorrel. But I just did not have the emotional capacity or depth to knit a mohair sweater when it was hot. And when I first decided I wanted to do this, it was like spring going into summer. And now that it is officially fall, I'm ready to pull out my mohair again. And so these are the colors that I picked. So these are all colors, again, from Magpie, but they're from the Magpie Fiber Society. You ready to see? You can kind of see. Mm -hmm. You like it? Mm -hmm. Okay. In no particular order, because I, I think I have more colors now than I'll need for the actual pattern. But I have, and these are all swanky socks, so they're 80% merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, this is a, an actual color. This is called London Rain. I think you can still get this. So I have that color. This is a Fiber Society colorway. Another Fiber Society colorway. This was from their Winter Solstice box in 2021, 20, 20, I want to say. I think it would go like that. <clears throat> and then, I don't know, I just felt this purple some kind of way. So this, I think, could go here. 
or here. But I kind of think I like it here. Or maybe here. Let's try it here. Okay. And then for the mohair, because you use a mohair when you knit it, and that's going to help like fade the colors together. So for the mohair, I have this color. Um, it is from Treehouse Knits from the, um, oops. oops, you got it? I got it. <laughs> it's from the Coco Collection, and it's called Underworld. And it's this really pretty, like, warm, purpley blue. And I just thought that that color with these, can we pull it closer? Can we hold it closer? You got it? Ooh. Don't fall. Okay. I just felt like that would be so pretty. So, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I'm I'm torn on the purple. I have some other colors I can maybe um, pull from now that I can like look at and see. But I really want to knit the sorrel. And I for sure want these two colors. Like, those aren't going anywhere. Everything else is TBD. Like, everything else is up for debate. So, I think what I'm going to have to do is just wind up all of these colors and swatch and see how I like it and pull out some other um, some other skeins of Magpie that I have just in my yarn pantry and see what the swatch looks like. I also want to swatch the dip stitch because I've never done that. And... Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that sweater. You like that? You think yes. that's going to be cute? Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a really fun sweater. Um, and really, like, versatile and wearable. We'll see. Okay, and then I went to Joanne. I went home to Alabama for a little bit, for, like, a week. And I went to Joanne. And I love Joanne. Like, I love Joanne the same way that I love Target. Like, I could just go and just walk around all day which is why she does not like for me to go with her to the Joanne but she took me with her to the Joanne and I found something so I had seen this on and I can't even remember but I saw a YouTube video about somebody making a sweater out of this yarn and they had this really really pretty green color and I was like I want to try that yarn out and I want it in the green color and I was in one of my impatient moods, so I could have gone online and ordered it from Joanne or ordered it from like the company and whatever. I didn't want to do that. I want to go into the Joanne, I want to buy yarn, I want to walk out with the yarn. So I did. Um, and I'm opening the one that's got plastic on it because I lost the tag for the other one somewhere. Okay, this is from Lion Brand. It's their re-up. It's a blend of recycled cotton and polyester. So this is the label. There we go. And it's on a cone, which I love. And it was basic, they were basically giving it away. It was like $10 for a cone. And actually I saw online that Lion Brand was doing a sale and they had it on sale for like $7 for a cone. Um, and each cone gives you um, 651 yards. So that's a lot um and this is the color midnight which is a really pretty navy so i had to keep asking if it was blue or if it is black because i really struggle with colors that are on the dark end of the spectrum so yeah i struggle with like really dark purple navy black really dark brown i like i can't tell what color it is so i oftentimes have to ask someone else who i'm with like what color is this and my mom confirmed that it is blue because mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. thought it was black. It look, it still looks black to me. If I'm being perfectly honest, it looks black to me. Um, but it is navy. And it's they're saying that this is a size 4, which, if I'm not mistaken, is like a DK or a worsted? I'm not sure. Either way, my plan is to knit the Autumn League Pullover by Two of Wands in this yarn. The original pattern, um, which I have knit twice before, the original pattern is knit with um, Lion Brand Cotton Jeans. So it's made with a cotton yarn already, and I love that sweater. I wear it all the time. It's so practical. Every time I wear it, more so than any other hand-knit sweater that I wear, people are always like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you knit that. 
which is crazy to me considering the other sweaters that I've knit that that is the sweater that people are the most amazed by and I think it's just the fact that it truly looks like a sweater that I just like walked into a store in the mall and purchased off the rack but I wanted to knit another one of those and I've been wanting to make another one and I don't necessarily want to make it in wool because that's just like a lot of maintenance I just want like an oversized cozy sweatshirty sweater so I picked up three cones of this to knit another autumn league pullover and you know she loves an affordable yarn I like I don't love knitting with cotton you know it's not my favorite I do definitely prefer to knit with wool but this doesn't feel like super drying and I think I'm gonna try to knit it on my wooden needles so maybe that will help with like hand pain or anything like that so yeah I will report back my findings on this wool well not wool on this yarn um and I really like the fact that you can buy it on cones and it's fairly accessible because most people are close to or have access to a Joanne and you can find it online. Mm -hmm. And if I like it, I will definitely be buying more cones of it because there's a pretty, a really, really pretty green color, a really, really pretty cream color. Um, there was a like plummy purple color. There were some really, really like stunning colors in this yarn. And I could see myself making more sweaters out of it if I, if I like it. But that's all the yarn that I bought. I haven't been buying yarn. I just haven't. I'm not going to say I haven't wanted to buy yarn because I always want to buy yarn. There's yarn in a cart right now that I really, really want to buy. And the only reason I haven't purchased it is because I don't have enough for the project that I want to make. But as soon as more of it comes into stock, I'm buying it. It's the prettiest yarn that it's so it's so pretty but I also just want to knit up the yarn that I have and I have so many ideas for the yarn that I do have so I'm trying to be a responsible adult and not necessarily buy as much yarn because I I buy yarn at a pace even though I'm a fast knitter I buy yarn at a pace that far exceeds my ability to knit it And so I'm trying to do better in this new year of my I life. I appreciate that. Uh-huh. I mean, me and my yarn, we're doing just fine. Like, yes, do I have yarn spilling out of every corner of my apartment? Sure. Um, but I don't see the problem with that. No place for me to stay. <laughs> there is, I'm not making you, normally there's yarn on the bed. I moved the yarn off the bed so you had somewhere to stay. I feel like I'm not getting credit. You are. I've been doing You're good. doing a good job. I'm doing a good job. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Do you know that meme? I'll play it for you later. Okay. I don't want to say it on here because there's curse words. I don't want people to think I curse in front of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you'll play the song. Yes, <laughs> it won't be me. It'll be somebody else. But it's one of my it's one of my favorite little and I say it to myself all the time. Okay. For the people who know, you know. You know, if you know, you know. Um. Okay. Do you want to answer some questions yes, from people off the internet? Okay. Let's see what the people on the internet want to know. Okay, so a while ago, in June, I asked people on the internet why, not why, I asked people on the internet to ask questions for us to answer on the podcast. And then I didn't film that episode with you. And so now that you're here, we're going to go and we're going to ask the questions that people um, want to know. Some of them are really cute. Not all of them are knitting related, but some of them are really cute. Um, so we're going to start with like some knitting questions and then we'll go into some other questions. So the first question is, people want to know, what do you think of my knitting? What do I think of your knitting? Yeah, what do you think of my knitting? I think it's awesome. I know nothing about knitting itself, mm -hmm. but your products are awesome. They are amazing. And when I share them with people unbeknown to you, mm -hmm. they can't believe that's your work. Really? Yes. And you know how I feel about that. When you do amazing things, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, this is a byproduct of me. Yeah. And so I'm amazed with you learning this on your own mm -hmm. and how far you have come with this new skill that you have. 
I'm gonna give her the bride money that I promised her after this, but thank you. Okay, this person also wanted to know, what are you most proud of me? Like, what are you most proud of related to me? It doesn't have to be knitting related, just in general. What are you most proud of? Wow. Wow. You are just an amazing person. You were God sent to me. And you just never cease to amaze me. You are an awesome attorney for mm -hmm. civil rights and for people who don't have a voice for them. I originally didn't see you at this place <laughs> because of childhood. Not that she was a bad child. I don't like, I, it's, I am not I'm always the most question. friendly person. It's been rumored in my family that I'm not a people person. I know that's hard for y'all to believe and like most people to believe, but I don't do well around strangers all the time. So as a child, you always were speaking up for other people that often got you in trouble. So I didn't see you at this point. I mean, I'm being honest with you, right? Right. She wants to be an attorney. She wants to be this. She got to get through school and she can't just tell wrong folk the day wrong and you mistreated somebody else's child. So we went through that phase with you, right? I went through I that phase. I mean, that kind of tracks though, if you think about what I do. I but love telling do, people that they mistreat people. <laughs> but you, it came to full circle and here you are able to stand in front of anyone and tell them that and defend it. And so that makes me so proud of you. Hey. And then to pick up these skill sets just FYI, she's a pretty good cook too. She doesn't tell anybody that, but you can cook, you can knit. You just have so many skill sets as a person, not just your profession, but you also embrace you just being an everyday kind of person. And Aww. I'm so honored to call Thanks, you my daughter. Ma. You hear that? I'm her favorite daughter. Did y'all hear never, that? <laughs> no, I never said that. I'm her that. favorite. Did y'all hear that? I heard it. That's what I heard. Um, so somebody wanted to know, when did I start knitting craft slash crafting? So knitting, I started, so I learned how to knit a long time ago, like a long, long, long time ago. Um, I learned how to knit and crochet at pretty much the same time, but I stuck with crochet a little bit more and I would crochet on and off for years. And when I say like a long time ago, I mean when I was like six or seven. Um, and I stuck with crochet for a really long time and I would always, I always had like yarn, I always had knitting needles, I always had cro like crochet hooks and I would just like make random stuff from time to time. I was definitely not like a crocheter but I could crochet, if that makes sense. And I would always make like baby blankets for people and stuff like that. Um, then in 2018 I picked knitting back up and I wanted to make the Autumn League pullover. I remember seeing that sweater somewhere on like a blog or something and I was like, I want to make that. Had no idea how to knit. So I taught myself how to, like re-taught myself how to knit. Um, I was familiar but obviously had to like pick up a lot of skills and so I started back knitting in 2018 and I would say that I became like a capital K knitter. I mean as 2018, I would say I became a capital K knitter where I was like knitting all the time in 2019 so but crafting probably my whole life like we are the creative crafty people in our family um my brother is a really good artist like he can draw really really well my sister has a lot of ideas she's she has a lot of creative ideas but when it comes to just like inherent like craftiness that's always been kind of our thing together so, um, like I said, my mom can sew really well. She made like my sister's prom dresses. She made my like cotillion attendant gowns. It was like a side hustle for a while. She sewed me this, oh, I still remember. I don't know what happened to it, but my mom made me this bunny for Easter when I was like eight or nine. And I loved that bunny. She made a whole bunny and then she made the bunny outfits. It was amazing. Um, she also makes like beautiful wreaths, our Christmas trees every year, our works of art. Like my mom is a very creative person. And so I've gone through so many phases of craftiness, like so many like 
whatever. So I always have had like a craft box that has paints and glues and you know needle and thread and like all these different things. So for me it's been like a lifelong thing but knitting has been more recent. And I want to add about the crafting. In my family traditions for Christmas mm -hmm. we always had to make something make a gift that we made with our hands. So even at four or five years old because she was already in you know school that, that we had to have something that was made from your hands so you've always uh, done crafts yeah because it was part of our Christmas tradition that we still carry on today yeah it's, we don't like make it make it though always but we always have a sentimental gift like something that is very sentimental that is to be kept and like not to be um, I don't know. Just like something that's really thoughtful and, and meaning meaningful to that person. Now I tend to get like Pandora charms for my Pandora bracelet and not handmade items, which I love both of those. Um, so someone asked, this is a similar question. What did Felicia craft as a child? Everything. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one year for Christmas, I was really into like making ornaments and I did like etched glass ornaments with all of our names on them. Other crafts that I did, um, the only thing that I was just like not very good at is drawing. So I can't draw. Like I'm sure that I could take like art lessons or something, but drawing, I can't do like hyper realism or draw anything like that. I can oddly draw very, very straight lines. That I can do very well, but that is like the excess of my artistic ability. Um, but yeah, as a child, I think I I kind of dabbled in everything. Like, I really loved going. We didn't really... So, we lived in Nebraska when I was younger. I didn't... I don't remember going to Joanne, but I remember going to, like, Michael's. And um, before I, I knew any better, we would go to, like, Hobby Lobby and... Walmart. Walmart. And I would always just, like, find crafty kits, paint my numbers. Do y'all remember? Maybe I'm aging myself. But there used to be those... Um, like paint by number, no, they weren't paint by number, they were like color by number marker, but it was like that velour, and it would be, they would almost look like Lisa Frank type art. Do you know what Lisa Frank was? It was like the wild, brightly colored, I never liked them, but they were like the wild, brightly colored, it would be like a zebra that was like purple and green and gold and whatever. And so I would do those, I would always ask for those. I went through the phase where I was making like the friendship bracelet lanyards and beading things if if there was a craft in like the late 80s early 90s i did it i i did all of those things um okay another knitting question what is your favorite hand knitted gift from me i've given you three which one is your favorite the first one what was the first one it was a shawl like this uh-huh and it was Magenta looking. I think I would call it magenta. That and was the second one that I gave you, but keep going. What was the first one? This is why she doesn't get very many handmade gifts. That was the first one. No. You're talking about the half and half wrap that right, I made you. Right, the half and that half. That was the second thing that I made you. Tell me the first one. The first thing that I knit for her that I don't even know. Oh, I know. It was, it was a knit. It was crochet, wasn't it? No, it was knit. I knit her a shawl. It was, um... A Hohi Locatelli shawl. I want to say it was the girl from the grocery store shawl or something along that. But it's garter and um, garter and lace. And then it has like a lace border. It's two color. And what makes this even more painful is that I ordered the yarn for that project from La Bienna May. I ordered it from Paris. I was so excited. And it's... <coughs> It's the cashmere merino base, so it's like cashmere merino. It's so nice. Do you know where it is? No. no. She does not even know where it is. I'm gonna look in my closet. But I mean, if the half and half wrap is your favorite, I like the half and half wrap too. I I I like knitting those, but I think that's like a really fun way to play with color. And we, I'll link back to. I want to say it was like the very first episode of the podcast, but. She and I pick the colors together. So you can tell which color is very distinctly her and which color is very distinctly me. But um, I did enjoy like knitting that for you. So I'm, I'm happy you like that one. And it's very practical, so. Um, okay, this one I think is for me, okay. but we're 
I will ask it to you as well. So the question is, what is your ultimate dream project and what is the best thing you've ever made? So that's the question for you. I would <laughs> love to do, in terms of knitting, I would love to do like an all over color work sweater and very, very fine gauge. I would love to design it myself, but that's like a bridge too far, bridge too far for me. Um, and in terms of the best thing I've ever made, again, knitting wise, I think my favorite thing I've ever knit was my Fox Thoughts pullover. I love that sweater so much. I just love that one. That's the one with like the color, um, that's this one. This one. Oh, that one. Yeah, I was, yeah. Gonna, I was gonna put that at the top. I love that one. Although my um, this one is like a close second. Um, but I love the, the brown Astrid. one and the orange one. That looks so beautiful. The brown right? one. You got a brown cable like one. Oh, the cardigan. Mm -hmm. This one. Mm -hmm. So what she's talking about is the um, the Cote cardigan that I test knit for. Um, Hiroko Payne. I always want to call her the hair and the crow, and that is her Instagram name. But that is the one that I test knit for Hiroko Payne. Um, yeah, I do. A, I love that one too. And it was definitely a labor of love, but I there's just something about the box thoughts. I yeah, just I like love it. Love that. I love that sweater. Love it. Um, it looks just like the picture on the magazine. I love that sweater. And yeah, what about you? What is your ultimate dream project? For you? No, I mean for you or for me. Because again, you're an artist. I guess I really don't have one right now. I'm just trying to enjoy this thing called retirement life. Mm -hmm. So I don't want projects that take more than a couple of hours unless I'm on a beach someplace, enjoy yeah. life. I mean, that's where I am in this space. I will still sew, I will still make some little girl's dream uh, birthday dress as a princess. I will still make things for for you, for your sister, for the grand grands. And but I don't want a project. I just wanna just. Uh. That's fair. I have a project that I want us to do. Do you know what it is? I've been talking about us doing something together for a long time. What is that? Do you remember? No, what project could I do with you? I really want us to make a quilt. Oh, okay. And I talk about it all the time. That I really well, want us to make get a started quilt. while I'm on break from my vacation. Your vacation is almost okay. No, I mean like I'm gonna start traveling again. Oh, so okay. while I'm on break, we'll talk about it. I really want us to make a quilt together. Okay. <clears throat> um, this is gonna kind of transition. Um, between knitting and other life stuff. Okay. So, have you ever worn matching outfits? All the time. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All I, the time. <laughs> I saw that question and I cracked up because we as a family are like, we are very committed to matching outfits as yes. a family. I don't know that I really post about it on like social media. I don't really post my family on my knitting social media very often. Um, for a whole host of reasons, but we are like very committed to matching. And I think it's probably, no, it's probably equal parts me and my sister that mm -hmm. are like very committed to, we, I love a matching outfit. Love it. Christmas, we are a Christmas jammies family. Um, as many of y'all know, and this is gonna be a question that's coming up, but like me, my mom, and my sister are all sororers, we're all Deltas. So we like wearing matching stuff when we go to Delta events together. Um, so now like we match for everything, like even, so me and my sister, we went to two different HBCUs when our schools play each other, we were matching outfits. Like we will go and buy the same outfit in our school colors to wear to the function. Like we are, we have always been committed to that. Um, the person asked for photo evidence. Now the person who sent this, you know who you are. 
And maybe you don't remember, but you know who you are. And you know I don't know how to do all of that editing. But I will send you personally on your cell phone photo evidence. But we are very matchy-matchy. Um, have you ever had matching knits? I guess our half and half wraps kind of count as matching. I could, you know, they're the same. But it's just not the same color, but. Yeah. Um, I can make that happen, though. Okay. okay. I could make it happen. Okay. Someone asked. I'm assuming. I don't. Okay. This person said, how does it feel to have a legacy two times? So what they're talking about is me, my mom, and my sister all being in the same sorority. So how does that feel? It is. It is the best that a mother <laughs> could want that your daughters and you can do the same things together. The things that each of you enjoy separately, you can do together. Because we've been on this journey for 22 plus years, but we weren't all in the same in the sorority at the same time. So as each one of us came on, now we can do this together. And you know, it's more than just the sorority because we do things that um, also go with what you do as an attorney. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that aspect of our sorority of helping those who are less fortunate and being a voice and speaking up. We believe and, in social action around here. Right. A lot of social action. And just to give a little background, I am retired Air Force. I don't like to say just military because that can be any branch. I love the Air Force. And as retired Air Force, that means I've been on this journey for 50 years of being in a place and space where you take care of other people. And during that journey, my children are always went with me to those events. Mm -hmm. Anything that I did in the social action kind of world, you were there as a little girl, as three years old, four years old, and the whole family. So now to be adults and do it together, you just don't know the feeling. Like sliced bread and apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really like bread or apple pie, so we'll have to figure out something else to okay. compare it to. Um, mac and cheese. Like mac and cheese <laughs> and pizza. Okay, what is your favorite memory of your children? There are three of us, by the way. I have a brother and a sister, an older brother and an older sister. What's your favorite memory of us? Ooh. Turning 18. <laughs> what? Yes. I wasn't even home when I was 18. I left school <coughs> before I turned 18. Just a week? But I still was gone. Yes. But no. I think they're a birth. You know? Aww. Yes. Just to see God's creation, right? Mm -hmm. And then to see that creation grow into who you are now. Because I'm her favorite. Remember she said that earlier. Well, and for each of my children <laughs> to become who they are. So yes, I have really good, I mean, I just can remember so much, you know, your first step, you know, your first words, which were not English. Right. Right. Right, because she had um, daycare who were uh, Belgium nationality, so they spoke their language, and she's speaking to me in their language when she wanted something, you know. So, you know, those kind of things. I just have so many great memories. Let me tell you my favorite memory. What's my your favorite, favorite childhood memory? I love Christmas. All of my favorite memories are around Christmas, like growing up. Because? So, I mean, as a child, I didn't really appreciate it as much. Although I did like, lo I loved Christmas even as a child. Like I always knew that I loved Christmas. But I don't know. It was just, I feel like Christmas in our house was just always so like fun and magical and at least for me, like it always felt that way. So I just, I don't know. I just always loved Christmas. Like I loved waking up on Christmas morning and having breakfast. We always eat fam like breakfast together as a family um, before we can open gifts, which as a child was tortured. Today, you have to open one gift. Today, I love it. Like I'm like, let's drag it out as long as possible. I don't care. Um, I also 
drink at Christmas now. So maybe that helps me not care as much about opening presents. <laughs> but um, I don't know. And then like sitting around the tree and we would all open presents one at a time, which again, as a child felt like torture. But as an adult, it just now I appreciate that we take the time to really absorb the joy that the person gets from getting the gift and opening the gift and saying thank you. And, you know, everybody sort of gets their moment in the sun. Um, and being the youngest, I almost always got everything I asked for for Christmas. So there was never like a Christmas where I was disappointed or I was like, oh, I didn't get the thing that I wanted. So that was. But you talk about being the youngest. You can share the big age gap. I mean, I don't. It doesn't matter. I'm the youngest by a lot. Like a lot, a lot. So like more than ten years. Um, I'm the big, I'm the youngest by a lot. So I was, you know, they don't need to know that I'm spoiled. That's that's family business. Um, okay, someone I posted literally today as we were filming that we're filming and to ask questions. So we only got one question, but that's okay because I know this person in real life, and they want to know why you are so darn cute. <laughs> And good, from above. and good jeans. You are really cute. Well, thank you. You're my favorite. Mm -hmm. This is me being blessed for three scores. I don't think that math is math. Okay. Three scores and ten, right? Yeah. Okay. So three scores and ten in, in four months. I got four months, but I'm claiming it. And so I think this is God's grace to allow me almost 70 years on this earth and still have a reasonable portion of my health. You got a good chunk of it, yeah. Yeah. Say I'm mine. Say I'm mine. And a cute little baby girl to just hang out with. I love this. I know nothing about knitting, y'all, for real, for real. But I support whatever she does. That so this true. make me in a happy space to be with her in whatever it is that she does. And I also do this with the other two children too. But, come on baby girl. But, I, yes. I'm everyone's favorite. And I'm my sister's favorite my sister. Felicia, Felicia did my okay, hair for are, me. We, have, so we are going off the yes. rails. So that's why, yes, me why I'm so cute. Because Felicia took, took, takes care of me. Um. Okay, we are going to wrap this thing up. Thanks because, for allowing me to be a part of this. We have gone off the rails and it's time. I'm sure y'all are sick and tired of being here and we are getting ready to go get some delicious food and drinks mm -hmm. before I send you back home okay. without me. I'm very sad. So we're going to wrap this thing up. Wrapping this thing up, we have a date to get to to get us some food and some drinks. I'm very, very excited. I'm starving. My tummy has been talking. Hopefully you have not heard it. Um, thank y'all for giving me a little piece of your your time. I am hoping, I say this every time, but for real y'all, I'm hoping to be a little bit more regular now that summer is over and we're starting to get to in the house season, which again, my favorite time of the year, there will be a lot more knitting, a lot more things to share and a lot more opportunities for me to sit down in front of the camera and show you the things that I've been working on. But as always, I appreciate every single one of you who watches my video, who shares my videos, who likes them, who comments on them. Um, it really truly means the world to me to know that there are people out there who are interested in what I am doing when I'm just sitting on my couch watching Criminal Minds. So I love and appreciate all of you. And if you enjoyed this podcast episode, they are not all like this. Usually it is me by myself. Um, we are not a, a tag team duo. It is only me by, by, by myself. But if you like these videos, please consider subscribing. Um, it shows the algorithm that you enjoy my content. Um, and leave a comment. Please tell me your opinions on all the sweaters that I want to knit, on all the things. Tell me what you've been working on this summer. As always, I get so much motivation from seeing and hearing what you all are working on. You can also hit me up with a follow on Instagram. I'm back posting on Instagram because, again, I'm off of my summer hiatus. And um, I tend to post a little bit more. I'm a little bit more active. It's a lot easier to have conversations over there because it just is. And until I see you again, bye, y'all. We're going to film the outro. You know, the what? The outro. We got to tell, okay. tell the people bye. Okay. We got to ask them to comment and like and subscribe. Okay. You know, do all the YouTube things. Okay.